So I've been playing Gravity Rush. What? I don't think that I'd be overstating it when I say that Keiichi Otoyama is somewhat of a games industry legend. I mean, dudes directed the first Silent Hill, then went on to become one of the very few to have survived the Konami gulags. Work harder, you big. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not even really joking with that one either. <laughs> Konami employees who leave are labeled as ex-cons and are pretty much made unhirable going forward. It's why someone like Shinta Nojiri has disappeared off of the face of the earth and why Tak Fuji has been low-key until recently. And he's also made his own studio funded by Sony, where he made two games that were cool but largely unplayable due to their stiff as a dick difficulty and also these faces. One game that is amazing, please play it. And another game about one smelly bitch called Cat who lives in the cute little open world of Hexaville, and also has a cat who can manipulate gravity, thus allowing you to allow her to awkwardly blunder about the place fighting crime, essentially turning her into the cat from the tree saving cats, helping out these French cartoon looking motherfuckers with their cutesy yet miserable little lives. The main crux of the gameplay though could best be summed up as Whoosh. Yeah. Whoosh. Oh, oh wait, wait, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that way. Woo. And then you do that into enemies with big glowy weak spots and high up in the sky to get those sweet ass views. It's quite chill, honestly. Mainly because of how simple should be. I mean, you know, no one's perfect. Plus, things are supposed to be kind of awkward. Cat doesn't really know what she's doing and visibly looks and plays like that too. Aimlessly catapulting her clumsy ass into all manner of obstacles, breaking fences, popping fire hydrants and scaring the shit out of literally everyone the moment she lands. Not to mention her launching people up into the air on accident, it's all clumsy in all the right ways. Thing is, is that she doesn't so much fly as much as that she just alters the pull of gravity within a small field around. Uh, around her by pressing R1 once to lift off, aim with the analog or mo controls and then r one again to launch herself in said direction, only ever pressing it afterwards to stop drop or go elsewhere. Easy. However, as this blue bar will show, she can only stay airborne for so long, thus requiring quick stops to recharge or for her to pick up some of these blue orbs that replenish it instantly. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much the entire game really. Anything from traversal to the combat is done through this very simplistic control scheme. Sure, you can also do basic three hit combos with the squares, but why would you ever want to do that where you can fucking air kick from miles away like an aimless punch drunk missile? It is as much fun as it is awkward. And to make things even better, you will also get points from doing menial tasks, collecting and by beating enemies. That can be used to upgrade shit to make the blue bar even bluer, the floating even floatier. And you can also get some big dumb shonen style moves just to round it all off. Honestly, as strange and unwieldy of a game as it is, it was really easy to get used to due to how well Gravity Rush is paced, structured and tutorialized. For instance, you just starting off doing mostly collecty shit in safe environments, chase a bird or two, fight some one-off guys and help out the townsfolk here and there by finding them some stuff, getting accustomed to the feel of it all and generally what the game will expect from you going forward. But then you go to another district, then another, then another. With faster enemies, slower enemies, stronger enemies, enemies with shields, enemies that can only be hit from one side, side quests that see you placing bombs, defusing bombs, picking up items, throwing items away and doing things on timers, uh, escorting people, and pretty much the whole gamut of things that keep shit from ever getting boring or repetitive that work a fuck of a whole lot more better here than they would in other open world games simply through how much fun the basic mode of traversal already is. easily this could have been one of those tech demo tier indie games you can pick up on Steam for two bucks that'll only have some random gen levels or a single simple sandbox built around its mechanics, but nah. <laughs> they went the full fucking mile here. Missions, or chapters in this case, will all offer up something new. Whether that be some mild mechanical changes like the constant unlocks and the weak collectibles spread about harder to reach areas, interesting tonal shifts or story beats like chasing down and infiltrating a biker gang, jinxing a famous thief and thieving their theft, or suddenly sad and oh no, cat's sick so can't fly. Not to mention the constant changes in scenery, 
Gravity Rush is never not engaging. Well, except for the bosses. All combat, as stated, is flying into the black dudes' red zones. Usually, only one or two hits will do for things to satisfyingly break, but bosses have big health bar and red zones that'll be tricky to get to. It's like trying to thread a needle, only you're also naked, covered in lube, and are making your way down a stepless escalator. It's not easy. Especially with how the camera can seem a bit drunk after you change directions a few times, as well as the size of the screen doing that curvy blurry thing that indicates speed, which is neat during literally everything else. Don't get me wrong, in fact it's shit like that that makes the flying so endlessly enjoyable to begin with, but it can greatly fuck up your depth perception, which you kinda need when trying to hit something that's fast, tiny, and also out to hit you. Resulting in fights that aren't really hard or frustrating, but just kinda tedious and rather unrewarding. I've never felt satisfied beating these. It was just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's that done, I guess. It's weird as well how all fights take place off ground after a while, rendering the regular combat completely useless too. It's easily the most stacked on component of the game as a whole. I'd draw comparisons to Mirror's Edge, if it weren't for the fact that smashing up the regular enemies with moderation is still a fuckload of fun. Quickly zapping and zooming all over the place, relying on the mouth auto-correction to slam fuckers by the dozen, like some type of swift airborne ninja with terrible motor skills. It is both fun and funny, just not so much during longer fights, but yeah, it's barely a big deal. If you're wondering why these shadow monsters are a thing in the first place, it is because of these mysterious shadow holes shitting them out and sucking shit in. This goes for stray people, but also entire chunks of city that Kat then needs to liberate because the old man with the galaxy dick flasher coat told her so. Also, there's like this other gravity girl floating around who has Sonic the Edgehog color scheming sensibilities, so you know that there's plenty of mystery for Kat and her cat to peel away at. Which is a pretty fucking solid secondary propellant, as, as I said, not only does the game have tons of little subplots and one-off events that are very much like fairy tales, only anime and cool, but all of these stories will give way to tons of interesting characters who might not even be all that deep aside from Cat herself, but will be given heaps of personality through great-ass animations, artwork, and some spicy-ass writing with comedic timing a bum. Cat is best summed up by her being told that she smells bad and realizing that she's homeless, only to then instantly trip up and fall into a sewer thinking, hey, this smelly rat-ridden sewer would make for a perfect house. Looking all proud of herself while she's at it. It's really cute. She's clueless, cheeky, clumsy, yet extremely quick on her feet and resourceful, which again is shown by how she flies too and in how she and the world around her interact. You see, everyone Kat ends up talking to will have something to say about her. This mostly starts off negative, cause I mean she is the smelly flying chick ruining their infrastructure, but as she begins to reluctantly work together with the local police, she'll end up finding herself admired and seen as a type of superhero even. What's great about all of this as well is that you always get to have a piece of her mind too. Usually being somewhere in between confused, skeptical, and confused. Hopelessly chasing down boys, hoping that superhero aspirations turn into proper feels. And getting stuck running errands for these two assholes who she both hates and wants to help because poor, but also assholes. You can really feel the public perception altering around you, basically, as you keep solving wee mysteries and helping people out. Slowly making cat just that smidge more cocky too and all of the other unexpected superhero struggles that come with it. Now, while I'm usually not a fan of comic book panel cutscenes, like, <laughs> like you kidding me, bitch? Fucking Aquaman, Max Payne looking ass garbage. It is hard to deny how expressive these shits be, utilizing great art, sound effects, music cues, and minor nips of animation to where I kind of forgot that these weren't really proper cutscenes to begin with. Though, I will say that having this default looking font may not have been the greatest stylistic choice, especially when you consider that the entire game is a great stylistic Realistic choice. I uh, very much fuck with how GR handles its draw distance, showing only black outlines of big townages off in the distance, almost like a sketchbook slowly filling in as you get closer by. Not to mention how lively these townages is too. 
There's trams, trains, monorails, commercial blimps, billboards, LED screens, and people, birds, cats, dogs, and all manner of other zany shit coloring in the corner of your eye. Even the way that the excellent lighting choices and the pretty collectibles trail off into the distance, contrasting with the solid color skyboxes, making these towns as pretty up close while going for a walk as they are while zooming by up high. Towns, of which there are four as well, by the way, all with their own themes, memes, and color schemes. There's France, with the tiny little market squares, wheat trees, and hella slummage down south that fits with the tales of reject pauper redemption, but also the black cat on the rooftops aesthetic that the game is drenched in overall to a fucking T. Then there's Amsterdam, with the red lights, the canalesque burlesque streets, drunks, punks, and sultry ladies of the night. There's an industrial district that sees half of the town turn into one giant fuck-off factory with all manner of smoky pulsating pipes and really cool-esque color schemes, using a flat yellow skybox, but bright lighting with vaguely blue hues, making it feel almost kind of coastal in a way without it having any actual water to go around because, uh, well, we may or may not be on floating islands. It's kind of an important detail that I probably should have mentioned earlier. And lastly, we got old-timey New York, with the skyscrapers on wazoo, big parks, and hustle and or bustle all over the place. Admittedly, this one does feel a tad empty compared to the others purely because of its massive scale, but man, does it feel good to fly over. Basically though, however, in short, Gravity Rush is one dense motherfucker of a game. Every hour or two we'll see a new area, a new mystery, and even a new main plot beat and some extra moves to fuck with. All the while being mega faster and super agile, it is always 100% entertain. <laughs> well, <laughs> except for the boss fights of course.